Oh, um, does the red light mean it's on? Yeah, we're, we're filming. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Rear episode of Boom News NYU. My name is Daniel Levinson, co-creator and co-host. And I'm Alex Ravascio, Tisch senior co-creator and recently convicted murder con. Sponsored by the Tisch Student Government, Phone News NYU is a weekly news program which aims to inform NYU students about university decisions and administrative going-ons, and basically copy The Daily Show in pretty much every respect possible. You may ask, why well, start a news program here at NYU? To which I would respond, Don't we weren't going to do that. Just tell people you felt. Like last time. Our first story tonight. NYU buys more than $5 trillion in additional property, expanding all the way from Gramercy down to James Street. We sent our expert correspondent, Daniel Cole, to ask people what they thought of the expansion plans. And this is what they had to say. Roll clip. Roll clip. You good? What do you, what do you want from the What is going on here? Why can't I see a clip? It's a post effect. They're not going to put it in. What the does that mean? They're I can't even spell post, let alone know what it means. They're not. It's a Have you ever heard of it? They put it in after the cheese. Jesus Christ, it's so mindful. Please do not feed pigeons or squirrels. Hello, my name is Daniel Cole, and I'm here to interview people. Here's what they had to say. What's your opinion on the plans to also purchase a building right over there, like knock it down and convert it into a cafeteria? I didn't need to knock it down. <laughs> Not up to NYU standards. This isn't a joke. No. It should be. Biggest, bestest problem. <laughs> no! <laughs> Demolish it and convert it into dormitories. Uh, I don't like the sound of that. You are living two blocks? Yeah. Alright, what if I were to tell you they have a six-year plan to also expand in that direction? Into Abingdon like gonna, Square they're Park? They're trying to do like a whole circumference. Oh, so they're just going to turn Greenwich Village into a library. And f*** them, it's white neo-imperialism. It does look run down though, you must admit. No. They should just keep them dungy and dark for all the cocaine usage that goes on in NYU dorms. I'm here with Manhattanite number one. We're in Steinberg, actually. Wh whatever. I mean, I love NYU and I think it's great, but... It's great. How would you feel about NYU branding of buildings? Like... Billboards, banners... You could live there, but it would be NYU controlled. I'd be really upset by that. Just planting the purple flag of imperialism. Doesn't this school just bring so much joy to our wonderful city? Debatable. The summer is finally here, despite the weather outside, and with the opportunity to do summer internships. Who wouldn't jump at a chance to do bitch work for a faceless corporation while living in a shoebox on Avenue E where you wouldn't bury a squirrel? There are tons of internships available, from AOL to HBO to Amazon.com. Hey Alex, you had an internship last summer. How'd that go? Yeah, pretty good. Learned a lot of great stuff. I mean. You'd be surprised how many ways there are to lick a stamp. Well, it's important to realize that even if you don't get your first choice, any internship will teach you valuable life lessons. To discuss these issues and more, we bring you our Brooklyn correspondent, Crispin Overhoff, live from Williamsburg. Crispin, are you there? Hi, Alex. Dan. So, Crispin, where did you intern last summer? Oh. Well... I wanted to intern for Pitchfork, but that fell through, so like I wanted to work for an Onion AV Club, but that didn't work either. Um, so then I thought maybe I would just try like my local like coffee shop, but that had a commitment of like at least two days a week, so I just ended up starting my own band. What kind of music do you play? So, what kind of music do you play? Like, well, have you ever heard of Chairlift? They're alright. Half of Brooklyn's in a band. Playing music is a whole different story. Um, I did listen to some music, though. Um, but I prefer to call it Sonic Exploration. What does that mean? Don't worry about it. So what did you end up doing last summer? Yeah, I just kind of chilled here in Williamsburg. Um, I thought about living elsewhere, though, because everyone has a place here now. It's just, like, way too mainstream. Um, but then I realized, if everyone's in Williamsburg, 
wouldn't it be ironic if I were living in such a mainstream place because I'm so independent? That's not ironic at all. Well, I was thinking about getting a houseboat in the Gowanus Canal. Have you heard of it? Thank the you. Gowan, Thank Gowan you, Chris It's all the time we have. Oh, turn that off. Sorry, turn that off. What an enlightening young man. Yeah, and yet I feel like I didn't learn anything from him. Our guest tonight is an Emmy-nominated and DGA award-winning director, best known for his work with television programs such as The Golden Girls and Sesame Street. He's also a professor at Tisch, where he teaches students Sight Sound Studio. Alex had the opportunity to meet with him the other day to discuss his craft. We're here today to talk to Gary Shimakawa about a subject that's very, very close to his heart, and that's himself. How would you say you got into this industry? Kind of, um, pretty much fell into it, actually. You studied uh, comparative literature over there. I did. It's comparing literature. It's, it's comparing something, yes. You still have it with you? Could you compare, say, Moby Dick by Herman Melville and A Short Thing by Nicole Snooky Polizzi? See, I don't know uh, Nicole. Uh, Nicole. You're not familiar? No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's a young emerging talent. Ah, okay. You've had quite a lot of nicknames over the years. You've got G Shims. Cow of the Great, The Jester of Jerusalem, The Great Bambino, Colonel Sanders, Benny and the Jets, Stoop Kid, MC Beatbox Front Partier, The Man with No Name, Lady Gargare, G Man, and last of all, Shim Shady. Uh, what's your favorite nickname of yours? Well, my favorite name was uh, Shimmy. Shimmy. You worked with Mr. T several times. Mr. T, yeah. My wife actually put Mr. T in Rocky. He was throwing midgets for distance. Another sport that wouldn't really fly these days. Well, it was funny, funny idea. So then he got the gold. Did he have the gold when he was? No, no, he, he always had the gold. It was just something that, that he uh, he decided that was going to add to his personality and to who he was. He worked on the Golden Girls yes. as well. Who was your favorite Golden Girl? Uh, It'd be cliche if you said Betty White. Okay. I, I knew B. Arthur uh, uh, from years ago. and, and, and Chester A. Arthur's wife. And, and, yeah. Tell us about the episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that you directed. I did not direct the French person from Prince of Bel-Air. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. You directed Sanchez of Bel-Air. Sanchez of Bel-Air. That was, I believe, the Latin directed DVD spin-off. It, it, it was. You worked on a Saved by the Bell, another yeah. very popular, very popular yeah, show. You. People of my, my generation. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you guys made that show. I helped a little. I rolled cable, but I, I'll give you most of the credit, okay? <laughs> so, who do you think could win in a fight? Slater or Zach? Uh... It'd be close, actually. Was this something that was encouraged back then, just fighting amongst the children on the set? We used to actually look to have fights um, at least once a day. Just How do you feel that that was different? Uh, working with, you know, working on shows with a live audience or working on shows without a live audience? Well, it's comedy, so comedy ought to be played in front of an audience. We will tape this in front of the lab studio and it's afterwards. Okay. It'll be me and Dan behind the camera over there. Okay. And just laughing at and we can loop it. Okay. Over. It yeah. sounds like a lot of people I mean, that makes it a much better show. That'd be very exciting. <laughs> you were nominated for a Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Directing in a children's series for Sesame Street in 1996. Yes. But you didn't win. Who won that year? You know, I, I don't recall. How else are you supposed to hold a grudge? <laughs> you won two DGA awards. Yes. What's worth more, an Emmy or a DGA? DGA awards. Okay, because you won them. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty hard. What about on the, on the black market if you were to sell a DGA or an Emmy? I think the Emmy probably would, would sell more because they, everybody thinks the Emmy's worth more. But they're wrong because... But they're wrong because uh, I, the others I won. Okay. I, I... <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. And your porn's probably done loading. So enjoy the rest of your Monday morning. Bye-bye. Peace. Don't say peace. Would you rather I say hate? Did you do the peace sign we did? No. Well, that's fine.